Cry Freedom Soundbite number 54, Thursday, the 22nd of February 2018. A Book's Life. I'll elaborate on that shortly. Well, I was up till about, I don't know, 4.30 odd, listening to stuff throughout the night, which seems to be coming quite a trend with me. And then I kind of grab a few hours sleep and wake up feeling absolutely knackered, which probably isn't good for me, but it seems to be what my body's telling me to do at the minute, so I'm not fighting with it. I always feel wide awake in the night, and it's a good time to listen to things because I think it's quiet. And I feel I take it in more of anything. So I was finishing off listening to the second book in a series by John Pinella. And this is The Divine Secret Garden Part 2. And there's two further books I need to listen to after this. this. These books, what I've listened to so far, has very much made a lot of sense to me. It is completely and utterly out-of-the-box stuff that most people would just probably be totally phased by. The truth that he reveals as, as what he believes to be the case within the book. If it wasn't for the fact that I've, I've sort of had this, seen this stuff in other places anyway over the last couple of years and it's been coming to me and, and from other people and in other forms, because of that, and, and I think one of the reasons that I've, I've met so many people over the last few years and heard so many slightly different aspects to what it's all about, and, and I think a lot of that has been to make me capable of opening my mind up as far as it can go and and seeing so many different scenarios but that, that although confusing if you're able to sort of at least tackle that then it's it is part of the process of, of opening yourself up to the greatest truth ever I suppose <laughs> um, I'm not going to go too much into detail about the book because I think people need to listen to it for themselves and um, I really would urge people to do that in order to do that you need to go to John's website which is thedivinesecretgarden.com and on that first page, there's an option to click to get free books, essentially. And that takes you to a page where there are audios of his first few books that you can actually listen to on YouTube. Okay, which is what I've been doing. It's right. One thing I want to make clear, because a few people that I've sent these links to have come back to me saying that it all sounds too religious for them and they haven't really bothered going any further. Well, can I just say that that is it's anything but that. It's based on a decoding of the Bible, so it is going to sound what people would deem religious, but it, it's the opposite, because throughout the whole thing he's saying that he doesn't believe in the false religions and the false gods, the external falsism of it all that's been used to control us and manipulate us for a long, long time. And that's the point he's trying to make throughout. So it's not religious at all. Uh, and don't be put off by by that. You know, th these words are mentioned, the word God is mentioned a lot, because of the way that the whole religion thing has been used to control us. And, and lots of us know this now. We see the truths behind the controlling factions, okay? So that's why he mentions these words, is to make the point. And the Bible, as I've said previously a few times, is a combination of truth and falsism and mainly the good truths have been intertwined with confusing and misleading falsisms. So that is what the Bible is, essentially. And, and that's what he's trying to make clear in this, hence the references to quotations from the Bible, etc., etc. But this does not make this a religious work, and, and trust me on that one, okay? So you need to get your head past that and see what is really being said. And it's pretty shattering and sort of mind-opening stuff. It's... I've, I've said this before. Uh, okay, A Bug's Life. So, he, John mentions this film within the second book that I've just listened to because of its allegorical resemblance to what is going on. He talks about the grasshoppers and the ants, and guess which ones we are. The grasshoppers are essentially the custodians, the guardians of this realm that are set in place to control us, to lead us in wrong directions, to make sure that we never really find out what it's all about. And again, I hate to use this, this phrase because it's so used, but it's such an apt one to find ourselves, 
to know what we really are and what we really come from amongst so much confusion and manipulation because I've, I've reached that stage now of not being shocked by anything and there's, there's nothing that would surprise me that I, because of that I can acknowledge this as something that does resonate with me and that makes a lot of sense there's a lot in it that I've been feeling anyway and a lot of the things that I've said in the past even have been parts of what is being said here essentially what it's saying is that we very much have never stood a chance of a lot because we are so used to react to the things within us that keep us trapped again it all comes down to emotions and what we believe to be true and and what we therefore go with because we think it is true we don't realize that it isn't this world is it seems ruled in a way that it will never find peace because of the people that are controlling it and running it people i use that term lightly aliens would be a better word because of that it will always get back to the same thing because they make sure that it does because we are manipulated in such a way that we we have no choice really unless you can see and and it needs that number of people to see what is happening and then reverse the situation because the power has always been with us but the system makes sure that most of us don't realize that the power what the power actually is john says and other people i know say all right um, this this is known as the third dimension okay 3d third dimensional world which john is saying is is a complete illusion well we know that word certainly but it's it's a kind of holographic virtual reality world game world that we live in that we think we live in (laughs) even i suppose and there are many 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 different dimensions to this existence and the one above the one that we are projected into at the moment is the fourth dimension which is more of an ethereal dimension where things are not so much a physical reality as a mind shall we say reality psychological reality what we think as above so below it this is where this all comes in the thoughts that are put out there in in the fourth dimension are what comes back and are, is projected back into this virtual reality and therefore becomes what we believe to be our reality and um, in essence what this is saying is without going into too much detail is that the collective consciousness that this this string of words which is used again very frequently what the collective consciousness thinks as a majority is what comes back to us so the reason that we're kept down with all of this crap all the time you know the negativity the injustices the fear the terror all of it because we are immersed in this from every corner then that is what we get and given that theory then obviously it will all have been accelerating the more technology that we are subjected to uh, the more we connect with people around the world when you think back you know to what it must have been like centuries ago before any of this technology then people would only really be affected by what was immediately around them and not in the outer what was happening in the outer realms of the the planet now because we have this connection via internet to pretty much everything then obviously the whole process is getting accelerated and accelerated and going faster and faster and faster and hence this feeling of everything going round in faster and faster circles put it this way what i'm trying to say is and it would be so interesting if you could do it just imagine that you could actually get everybody apparently in this world at the moment to suddenly start thinking good things and see the future as rosy and see everything the way that we, we those of us that get what peace must feel like if, if all of us did that and felt that for a continued time how interesting would it be to see how things started to change do you not think and you know you could argue that's why things are starting to look looking as if they're starting to change anyway but there's a lot of good things that are going on out there right okay obviously the bad things are what we get hurled at us in order to keep us in this, this state of creating negativity if everything suddenly changed and the people controlling the television for example everything that 
comes to you uh, to you from mainstream media, if that was suddenly taken over completely and you were given nothing but goodness and positivity and compassion and empathy and that was all we got, then how interesting would it be to see what difference that would make? Just, it would be beyond fascinating. Um, again, the chances of that happening are extremely low, but the more and more people that start seeing and grasping the enormity of what has been happening for so, so, so long. And, and again, I did the last soundbite that I did was the one on the human barcode. And there's a picture that I put, I, I did a compilation picture for that um, on YouTube. And one of the pictures is this one that a lot of people would have seen, which is essentially showing, it's a silhouette of um, sort of ape to man a progression and then upwards and then gradually that goes back down as man becomes more robotical and ends up being a barcode now the stories that the story that that tells is like if you see it what it's trying to indicate it's indicating how we are molded through the programming from being essentially the savage i suppose let's say to going through the technological almost traps i suppose i'd call them we're all led to believe that technology is a positive thing and a forward-thinking progression. But then when you look at what it's doing to people, you have to question that, don't you? When you look, as, as John says in the book, you look at what's happening to the human race with regards to its lack of connection with each other now. It's all about looking down into your phone, into your computer screen, interacting with a false medium, shall we say. This is taking over in every way and it's happening more and more at every turn. You can see it. You watch the television and the adverts, these, these things that are coming through where people can talk to each other in different rooms of the house through technology, not even interact with each other at all. It's all part of a well thought out plan to destruction essentially. And people go along with it because they think it's advancement and they think it's a good thing. And there are benefits with everything. There's always a good and there's always a bad, obviously. And if things are used in the right way, with the right intent, with hearts, shall we say, behind it as opposed to evil, then it can, of course, be beneficial, but not the way that it's being used. The idea that John puts forward, and again, many others do also, is that the way that we are controlled is that the options that we have all come from the same place, essentially, and they're all there to trick you. And let's take, for example, the party political system, okay? So... You've got, let's just take the first two leading parties, right? You've got the red and the blue. You've got the Labour Party and the Conservative Party, right? And people, because people believe it's real, then whatever they are told within their heart, whatever motivates them and whatever is, comes to them in their mind, they will go with the party that resonates the most with them, okay? With regards to what their makeup is. It only, it only takes a couple of ideas of, of what you believe is right for you to suddenly take on the whole of that programme and believe everything that you're told. So, for example, if the Labour Party said a couple of things on their policies that really resonated with you and you believed in because you believed that wrong was being done, then you would take on that because, I guess, because it would be better than the, the other choice. And you'd suddenly start having faith in everything that they do and believe them in everything that they do. And that's when they control you. That's when they've got you. Because you've given your mind away to an external faction instead of looking within yourself to what is right and what is wrong. And this is the whole matrix personified. And this is why we're all fighting each other tooth and nail and one group hates the other group and would, would never even entertain the slightest idea that the other group may give because we've all been programmed in this way. It's so clever and it's so frightening when you see how well it works. And it's only when you step back and look that the overwhelming efficiency of it just hits you square in the face. Uh, that's all I can say really on that one. So, I'm just going to say to people, go and listen to that book. And, okay, it's another criticism made was it's been done in one of those computerized voices. And I understand why he's done that because there's so much of this. You know, it's, it's a big work and 
to actually sit down and record yourself dictating that would have taken a long, long, long time. Um, there's a program there that can just do it, you know, and it's not perfect, but it's not bad and it's it's understandable pretty much. There's the odd bit that gets a bit muffled and confused, but as a rule, it's it's all understandable. I, I was actually going to re-record. I didn't realise how extensive it all was at the beginning, so I, I actually did say that I was thinking about re-recording it all, but there's so much of it that it just wouldn't be a practical use of time because it's, it is there already and... I say, as I say, if you can get past that voice, and I, I know the irony. That's the irony there, isn't it? That the whole thing is talking about how we've been, um, how we're getting roboticized, and then there's this computer voice coming at you. So I get the irony of that, and maybe that's deliberate. But each person has to come to their own conclusions. So all I can say is listen to it. You know, it's it certainly opened my eyes. Again, a lot of it I was kind of there anyway, but it's just that final clicking of the pieces and I've still got two more to, to listen to and, and others to possibly read so so the final thing would be is does all this lead to good or bad good news or bad news mm. <laughs> depends how you what you view as good news or bad news I suppose uh, I don't know is the answer um, do I feel reassured uh, not really I think the only way you can view all of this is again whatever you believe or whatever you don't believe if you believe that well he doesn't call it reincarnation he calls it reprogramming whereby you come back and back and back and and eventually the idea is that you will if you learn what you're meant to learn and do the right things you will go back to something better which isn't this planet so that does resonate with me and it's not meant to be again in a religious way we're not talking about heaven and hell per se we're talking about energy and knowing and a hell of a lot more so i'm still learning myself or you know i haven't got to grips with all of this either yes but i'm getting there one of the lasting things i'm left with after getting through the first two books is that it's a sadness really because of the fact that it sounds if if you're going to go with what john is saying and with what other people have said that this world is not something that we can make into a better place because that was never the purpose. This virtual reality is an existence that has been created by, shall we say, for want of a better phrase, fallen angels. And I'm, there's no religion in any of this. That's just a phrase to give, give you an, an, an essence of an idea. The fallen souls from a place that was based on positivity and goodness that were almost banished to this realm because of their actions and beliefs and mindsets and they now use this realm as their home in which they are trapped to a large extent uh, to run the way that they want in such a way that it will never unless there is a major change in the collective consciousness it will always remain the way it is because that's the way it's meant to be and it is essentially a platform for us to have the opportunity if we are of open minds to learn important things that will affect our future whatever our future is whatever realm our future is in and if we don't learn we will continue to be reprogrammed into this reality until we do learn but because the force of light shall we say is from a place of goodness then we will never be shunned or not given the opportunity to progress and to advance so the sadness is in that we can never make this world into the peaceful beautiful place we want it to be because it's not real anyway and because it is a program so once you grasp that then it's all about making the difference within that program so i suppose in a way it is almost like being that virus but the virus of positivity that puts a spanner in the works of the mechanisms and brings the heart back into it as much as it can and that's all i'll say on that bit